welcome all. So I will give an uh, introduction of Open Access Journal. Just I will tell a little bit about myself. I'm Dr. Rishali Dandavate. I'm Director of Open Access Journal, Ambassador from 2016. I'm working for uh, India, India country, uh, for the open access movements and uh, uh, like training program in Open Access Journals. I'm also part of the evaluation of Open Access Journal, but I'm doing a primary check. So final decision is taken by the main DOJ editor team. So uh, I'm also librarian. Uh, I, we will talk about a little bit about uh, open access because uh, DOJ support open access. So open access is the practice of providing online access to the scientific information. It is a free of cost and uh, most of copyright and licensing restri restrictions. So that's why open access is supported. Uh, the director of Open Access Journal, I will tell a, a brief background that it is started in May 2003 uh, at Lund University, uh, Sweden with 300 titles only. Uh, it's a non-profit organization with high quality Open Access Journal across over the all scholarly disciplines. So all disciplines are covered. Uh, now it includes nearly 18,300 journals and more than 8 million links of open access articles. So you can see from 2003, it was started with 300 titles and into 2022, uh, it's like 18,500 journals. It's all over the world uh, recognized indexing service. So a lot of people, a lot of editors are applying in the director of open access journal. The may, uh, mission of uh, DOAJ is it's help readers to find a quality of open access material uh, help authors to identify where to publish and uh, help libraries to highlight open access resources to the patron. For the funder, it's ensure the compliance with the mandates, open access mandates. For the uh, publisher, it's increase the visibility and the usage and also help a publisher to adopt the best practices. So we always follow the best practices and it's build a better publishing system for all. So who benefited from the work of uh, DOAJ is doing? So it's always researchers, students, and the public who are, who are searching for the good open access journals and uh, they, they are avoiding uh, questionable journals. It's allow researchers to advise and find proper publishing channels. So because a lot of uh, people are getting the funds for, to publish their research, so uh, they can find the open access journals to this uh, platform. For research managers to help the uh, data determine and publishing in good open access journals and li like i said to uh, monitor the compliance with uh, policies and mandates because a lot of uh, funders they are saying that you have to we will give you funding but you have to publish in open access journal only so it helped them for the authors like as i said uh, the good publishing channels and uh, for the mandates also and by using, uh, they can submit a paper in good journals and avoid unethical journals from this platform. Uh, funders, again, same to approve publication channel, good open access included, and uh, to check, uh, to look DOJ to check quality open access journals and uh, policies and mandates, as I said. So, as I already said, that it is all that is the main criteria that funders are giving that you have to submit your paper in open access publishing. So research funders is also this is included. For libraries, like I'm librarian, so it is helpful for us because a lot of time we are facing a problem for the finance and uh, uh, funding to, uh, you know, go for the subscribe database. So also advise researchers of where to publish and uh, we are uh, referring them that is that this is more important tool. And open access uh, publishers also, we, it is helpful. So we have given the uh, director of open access journals links on our library website. And like a lot of people are editor here and uh, you want to index your journals in DOAJ. Uh, why you want to index? Like I will uh, tell you because it will give a higher visibility for your journal. It will give more discoverability for your journal content, quality of your journal processes, enhance reputation of your journal because after indexing, you can use our logo and you can attract more authors and meet requirement to the research funders because a lot of, like as I said, the uh, research funders, they are making mandatory. And for, for India, now Medical Council of India made a mandatory that your journal to be indexed in DOAJ. So that is also mandatory criteria, different, different countries, uh, agencies are doing. So a lot of editors are applying towards us. And as I said, that DOJ follows uh, transparency and the best practices. So 
कमिटी ऑफ पब्लिकेशन एथिक्स डीओजी ओपन एक्सेस स्कॉलरली पब्लिकेशन असोसिएशन दैट इज ओआसपा एंड वर्ल्ड असोसिएशन ऑफ मेडिकल इयर्स सो ऑल दिस आर टीम इन्वॉल्व इन द ट्रांसपेरेंटी ट्रांसपेरेंसी एंड बेस्ट प्रैक्टिसेस सो ऑल गाइडलाइंस आर अवेलेबल जुडिट विल टॉक मोर अबाउट दिस सो if you want more information on doj so this is the website home page that doj.org publisher information if you want to apply there is a application guide all links are given here so you can apply frequently asked questions are available in faq best practices guide of transparency is there and if you want some help you can drop a mail to the help desk at doj.org so thank you this was the basic introduction from my side now i will hand over to the judy then she will talk about the indexing criteria and more thank you over to you judy thank you vishali can you stop sharing brilliant yeah, yeah. and i will start my sharing yes visible mm -hmm. Let me just uh, rid of that. Okay, so you can see that, okay? Yes, yes. Brilliant, thank you. So thanks, Vishali. That was uh, a, a nice, a quick introduction to DOAJ. Um, and I'm going to go and talk in a little bit more detail. Um, not really much um, about DOAJ and why it's important to be indexed, because Vishali's already talked a lot about that. Um, so I'll concentrate mostly on what the criteria are for inclusion, how you can apply, what the process is. And I think quite useful for anyone who has applied before and been rejected, some of the common reasons for rejection and, and what you can do about that. So just start off very briefly to add to what uh, Brashali has said. Um, our aim is to raise the profile of open access publishing to, to give journals more visibility, more impact. But I think an important point to, to make at this point is that all the services that the DOAJ provides um, are completely free of charge. So there is no cost to you to apply. There's no cost to be indexed or to remain indexed um, after um, after several years. There is there's no um no barrier in terms of cost. DOAJ is funded um, mostly by libraries and, and publishers um, who, who give us the money to keep going, so which is excellent. So currently we have uh, um, journals from around 130 countries in DOAJ, um, which you can see from, from this map. The biggest number um, of journals come from the UK, which is a lot of commercial publishers um, from Brazil um, and from Indonesia. Um, and those two countries have, um, have a lot of open access journals that need to be in DOAJ because that is um, a government requirement for them. So um, out of the nearly 18 and a half thousand journals that we have in DOAJ, what's interesting is that we have, um, you know, more than two thirds of those are journals that don't charge authors any fee at all, um, what we know as a, as a diamond journal. Um, and that's quite interesting because a lot of people assume that open access journals have to charge an APC, um, and that is not the case. A lot of them are supported by um, their institution um, or in other ways. So I was just looking at the journals um, from the region um, that we have in DOAJ at the moment. Um, so for India, we um, this was figures that I found yesterday. Um, we had 326 journals from India, 115 from Pakistan, and less than 30 from Nepal, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka. So um, I think we can see that there's scope to include um, quite a lot more um, journal content in the OAJ if it meets our criteria for inclusion. Um, so I think Vishali has pretty much covered um, why it's important to be indexed. Um, I think it is important to show that your journal meets standards. Um, 
but what's useful i think for the for the journal practically is that you if especially if you can supply article metadata to us as well um your content will get included in search engines and in indexing services who many of whom take data from doj um and then that will attract more authors and readers both locally and internationally um and i think the stats at the moment show that I mean, India is at least in the top three countries um, worldwide who are using DOAJ. Um, so I think that's also quite important. As Vishali said, there can be um, government or funder requirements like the Medical Council of India. And of course, many journals see, you know, if you can get, uh, you can meet the criteria for DOAJ, that can be the first step to inclusion in other databases like Scopus or Web of Science. So most of what I'm going to talk today is about the criteria for inclusion. Um, as Vishali said, we hope that journals will be following best practices in publishing, and that's what we um, expect um, of any journal that's publishing, not just open access journals. Um, and you can find those principles of transparency and best practice um, on our website and also at COPE and OASPA and um, the World Association of Medical Editors, we all collaborated in um, producing these best practice guidelines. So they're a useful guide to start with um, when you're publishing a journal. So to look at specific DOAJ criteria, um, obviously we are a database of open access journals, so we expect that all content is freely available. Um, but we know that some journals um, can keep running because they sell a print version and we do allow um, journals to produce a paid for print version um, and that won't stop them being indexed in DOAJ. Uh, we expect there to be immediate access to content, so no delay or embargo. So if you publish an issue um, today and you send it off in print, that got to be available online at the same time or before. Um, we don't accept journals that require registration to read content. Um, and also we expect a journal to display an open access statement and adhere to our definition of open access. There are lots of definitions of open access out there. Ours is this, which is very wordy, but the main point is that um, the journal gives immediate free access using an open license and I'll talk more about licenses uh, later. So your journal's got to be active i.e it needs to have published um, content you know within the last year or so. Um, it needs to be publishing to the schedule if you have a schedule of two issues a year, then we expect the journals to be keeping to that schedule. Um, as Vishali said, we'll um, accept journals in any scholarly research area, um, from science to arts and humanities and everything in between. Um, we have no language requirements. You can publish in any language. So if you're not publishing in English, um, we don't need any English on the journal website at all. Um, and that's different to services like Scopus and Web of Science who require English titles and abstracts. Um, before you apply, make sure that you are publishing a minimum of five research articles a year. Um, and if you are setting up a new journal or if you're flipping a journal from a subscription model to open access, um, make sure you've published at least 10 research articles in open access before applying to DOAJ. Um, looking at the journal website and what we require from that, um, first of all, and the first check that we make when a journal applies is that we check for an ISSN and that ISSN must be registered and confirmed at the international ISSN centre, ISSN.org, and we will check every journal against that. Um, so the first thing is to make sure that you've done that before you apply, because otherwise your journal will get rejected straight away. The journal should have, should have a dedicated homepage um, and the full text articles should be downloadable one by one, not just as 
a complete issue. Um, avoid using any misleading metrics um, like um, alternative impact factors, minimize um, intrusive advertising, you know, um, pop-ups. We often get journals apply that where there's pop-ups kind of covering the content. And we recommend a secure website, which is HTTPS, which I think most, most uh, websites are using now, but we still see some journals um, using HTTP. So we also expect um, a certain amount of information on your policies. Um, and that would be the aims and scope, which you would expect to have on your website anyway, and your instructions for authors. But there are some things that um, journals sometimes don't include. Um, you need to say what the author charges are. Even if you're not charging authors anything, we need you to say that because transparency is really important, especially in terms of charging. Um, we need to see um, what your open access licensing copyright policies are. And I'll talk about licensing and copyright in a minute. We need the contact details. So where is the journal based? Um, and, and who are the contacts? How, do, how does someone get in touch with you? And obviously we want a list of the editorial board um, that are working on the journal. So moving from the editorial board into the editorial process, there's lots of different types of peer review. We don't specify what kind of peer review you use. Um, and there are many kinds, as you can see from this graphic. What we do um, ask for is that the journals ap apply a rigorous peer review process. And we want to see a description of that process that your journal is following on the journal website, not a general what is peer review, but what is the journal doing? Um, in terms of peer review. Um, you should minimize endogeny, and you may not know what that word is, and I only learned it fairly recently, but what it means is um, the number of papers that are published by people who are associated with the journal. So editors, editorial board members, reviewers. Um, it's not good practice to be publishing um, a large proportion of your content by people who have a link with the journal. So I, I looked through a number of uh, journals um, from the region that were rejected this year, and several of them um, were rejected for endogeny. So um, please be aware of that um, and make sure that you have a wider authorship um, for your journal. Uh, before you apply to DOAJ. Um, obviously, we recommend plagiarism checking, um, but actually that isn't required for inclusion in DOAJ um, at the moment, um, but it is highly recommended um, in order to make sure that you're not publishing uh, duplicate papers or, or papers where um, content has been plagiarised from articles already published. So, Moving on to licensing, this is a really important part of open access. Um, you can put a, a, a journal um, on the web and make it free, but that doesn't make it open access. Um, and so you have to use a license. That will inform the readers how they can reuse that content. They can inform the readers of any reuse that's not allowed. Oh, someone's writing on my screen. I'm not quite sure how they managed that. Um, and the license protects both the author and the journal against unauthorized use. Um, we recommend the use of Creative Commons licenses, um, which are pretty well known nowadays um, across the world. Um, and there's no charge for using those licenses. Um, and I'll talk about the different types of licenses in a second. And just to note that, especially if you're used to um, subscription journals, um, where the content is published and it says copyright, you know, the name of the journal, all rights reserved. That's not appropriate for open access material because if you're publishing under a license, an open license, then some rights are given to the user um, so that they can reuse that material. So all rights are no longer reserved. So please don't use that um, because we will reject journals that do. 
So the different types of licenses, there are six um, Creative Commons licenses. Um, and the most liberal, um, the one that allows the most reuse is the CC BY. And that basically allows people to reuse the content for pretty much any reason. Um, and they, there are other licenses um, which are more restrictive. Um, the SA or share alike means that if somebody uses that work, they have to license it in the same way as you have. You can specify that no commercial reuse is allowed, or you can specify that no derivative works can be made, which means um, the paper can only be used as it is and can't be amended in any way. Um, so we make no um, specifications about which license you choose uh, for your journal. Um, it is really up to you um, what what works best for your content in in your area. Um, so uh, we will accept a journal that uses any one of these licenses, and and some journals will allow people to choose, allow the author to choose which license they want. So you might say, well, our standard license is. Um, non-commercial um, but if your funder requires it we will allow you to publish under cc by that happens a lot in in europe where um, many of the funders require a cc by license but commercial publishers want to publish under a non-commercial license um copyright and licensing are very often thought to be the same thing and they're not um the license is about how that work can be used. Copyright is who owns the rights to, to that um, article. And that can be held by the author or it can be held by the publisher. In open access, best practice is for the authors to retain the copyright of the papers that they've written. Um, but we will accept journals where copyright is transferred. It is again, your choice as the editor of the journal. Um, we need you to state your copyright policy on the journal website so it's clear both to the to us and the, or the reader but especially for the author so the author knows um, what your policy is and for that reason we recommend that you provide a link to the author agreement so that it's clear um, if there is an author agreement um, so it's clear um, for the author what they're signing up to and what rights they retain and what rights they transfer to the publisher. So if you have any questions about that, we'll cover that at the end. Um, and you probably have, I can see there's some stuff coming up in the chat. Um, so I will just quickly talk about how you do apply for inclusion in DOAJ. Um, and the first thing is that we only include journals that apply. We don't assess journals from from around the world and include them um, on our own um, initiative, a journal needs to come and apply. So first of all, there is a guide to applying, which gives a lot of the information that I've just talked about and probably more, and that's online. So look at the guide to applying um, and then you apply um, on the online form. You just need to um, register an account with us, which is just name and email address, and then you can. Um, apply. The form has got seven pages, um, which does sound a lot, but it's not as bad as it sounds. Um, you just have to, to um, say that the journal complies with our definition of open access and provide a link to your um, open access statement. Then there's just the details about the journal, like the title and the homepage URL and the ISSNs, etc. Um, details of your copyright and licensing policy. Um, then uh, how, what peer review um, you use, uh, whether you use plagiarism checking, your aims and scope, link to your editorial board and your information for authors. Then we'll ask about um, whether you charge a fee um, for authors to publish. Um, then there's some questions on best practice, um, which I'll just mention in a minute. And then you review your answers and submit the application. Um, 
The best practice page is um, a set of things which we recommend as, as good practice, but are not required for inclusion. So these include digital preservation or archiving, um, what your policy is on authors self-archiving um, a copy of their article in their institutional repository or elsewhere, um, persistent identifiers, um, which mostly um, is the DOI, um, whether you use ORCID IDs um, and whether you um, adhere to the standard for open citations, which actually, if you send references to Crossref to get DOIs, you will automatically um, comply with that um, from now on because they made a change quite recently to make all the references um, open that are supplied to Crossref. So remember that these are all recommended but not required so you can answer no to anything on this page and that won't affect your ability to be included in DOJ. Um, so what is the process of application and review? Um, well, very uh, simply, um, it's the, um, when you apply, um, the first thing that happens is we have a triage team who, who makes some initial assessments. They check the ISSN, first of all. Um, they look at whether the content is, is freely available. They look at whether the website is working. They look at whether there's any licensing. Um, and they can uh, reject journals at that stage. And about, um, I'm just thinking, a little over a third, I think, of the applications that we get are rejected at that first stage. So if um, your application passes through triage, um, it will go to our editorial team. Um, and that consists of um, people like me, um, who are employed by DOAJ and a number of um, volunteers, um, including Grishali, who, um, who does some um, assessments for us. Um, and we have people around the world who do these evaluations um, for us um, in, in local languages, um, if English isn't used. And um, those volunteers will recommend a decision um, and then someone like me who's the who's um, an editor we will make the final decision on whether to accept or reject that application um, and then feedback goes back um, to you either to say yes your journal has been accepted or if not um, why that journal hasn't been accepted and the reasons for the rejection. So for last year, um, we had just over 10,000 applications to DOJ. Um, and there was an acceptance rate of about 35%. Um, we're trying to uh, review journals in three months or less, which we're mostly su successful with, but um, not always. Um, and we have... Uh, just over 120 people who are doing this work and that consists of the editorial staff and our volunteers around the world. So I'll just talk briefly about some of the common reasons for rejection so you can be aware of that before you put an application in. So I mentioned that you know quite a high proportion of journals are rejected at the triage stage. Um, and the main reasons are because the journal isn't fully open access. So when our triage team tries to access content, they're unable to. Um, if the ISSN is not fully registered, <coughs> sometimes it's kind of partially registered, you know, locally with your local ISSN center, but it needs to be um, fully registered at ISSN.org. So we wouldn't accept it if it's, they describe it as provisional. Um, Sometimes not enough research content has been published. Um, either um, the journal is new and hasn't published enough to uh, meet our criteria, or the journal is publishing a lot of other content and not much research, 
Order Journal hasn't published, for instance, in the last year, um, in which case we treat it as inactive and then we wouldn't accept the journal. Uh, we still get applications where the full text content is only available um, as an issue. Um, so as I said, we want to see individual full text articles. So, so someone should be able to come to the website and download an individual article um, without needing to get um, an entire issue. Sometimes people send applications and uh, they put the wrong URLs in, or they just put the same URL to the homepage for every question that we ask. Um, if we don't find the information that's required, um, the journal can be rejected. So if we ask for where your licensing policy is, we expect to find a URL that leads to the licensing policy. Um, and as I said, if we don't find any licensing information, um, then the journal will be rejected as not meeting our definition of open access. So if the journal passes through that stage and it goes to full review, there can be many, many, many reasons why a journal can be rejected. Um, but some of the main ones um, are listed here. And that would be that incorrect information is given in the application. So we will check the journal website. Um, and if you say there's no APC, but there is an APC, you know, then that can be reason for rejection. Um, often some of the information we require isn't clear or it's missing from the website. So for instance, there's no information about the peer review process or, um, let me think what else might be the case. Uh, the aims and scope are not clear. Um, there's no information about charging. Um, so those are, are, are quite, um, common. If you publish in more than one language, so you publish in English and you publish um, in, I don't know, Arabic or Urdu or Hindi or Tamil or whatever. If you have the website available in both languages, make sure that the information is the same in all languages that are used on the website. And we have found um, for some journals that that um, is not the case. You, you make the information available in English because you think that's what we want to see, which we do, but we also want someone who's looking at that um, information in a different language to see the same information. Sometimes we feel that um, the peer review process doesn't um, seem adequate, um, and then we would reject for that reason. Um, and as I mentioned before, endogeny, um, can be an issue, especially for new journals. So if that's too high, um, then we would reject for that too. Sometimes the licensing and copyright policy is unclear, um, and that is also a common um, rejection reason. So make sure that you you understand licensing and copyright and that your policies are clearly outlined. And finally, this is a bit of a, a, a general statement, but Journal does not employ good publishing practices. So if we look at a journal and we feel that there are things that the journal is doing that um, are not compatible with, um, with good publishing practices, then we can reject the journal for that reason too. So there's many, many reasons. Um, and it will obviously depend on, on your journal. And hopefully um, we, won't, we won't get that. Um, so as Vishali said, there is help available. Um, the guide to applying, as I mentioned, there is a PDF version of the application form that you can download um, and, and look at before you apply if you wish to. If you're using the OJS platform, uh, there is an application guide that uh, they've made available, um, which is useful to know um, what information you need to, to put and how to do that um, on the OJS platform. And as Vishali said, we have a help desk that you can contact with questions. Um, and that's, that's the end of the presentation.